Today, I'm so excited to welcome David Kane to the show. He writes over at Raptitude, which is a website about basically getting better at being human. And he's one of my favorite writers and creatives in the online space. So I'm really excited to have you here today, David. Thanks. Nice to be here, Jillian. So one of my favorite posts on your site is this go deeper, not wider, this idea of creating a year of depth. And I love that idea idea, but what are a couple examples of what this what this looks like to go deeper? Well, the idea is really to look at what you've already got in your life and cultivate the value that's already there rather than spreading out wider to new pursuits. So the most obvious example is with books. Like if you look at your bookshelf, you probably haven't read most of the books on there, yet when you bought them, you assumed that you would read them. So that's number one. Um, another one is going back to the hobbies that we started at one point, assuming that we'd be really good at, that we'd become proficient at, and you know, get that deep fulfillment out of, say, playing piano really well or learning a language fluently. Those are the two main ones that that kind of communicate the spirit of going deeper rather than wider, like looking for cultivating the value in what's already in our lives rather than going out and starting something new. I love this idea of going deeper with the things and the commitments and even the relationships that you already have and how you talk about like drilling down for value. And this might also be like a mark of maturity, just being less flippant about all the things that we bring into our life, I guess assuming that we'll have space or time or energy for them. But what struck me was you talked about kind of this this little high that we get from from starting something new and almost the the impulse to not even necessarily start something new but just buy the thing that represents the thing that we might start um what what is it about that that you think is so kind of attractive and almost seductive for us to just buy the new thing yeah yeah i think it's really a function of living in a consumer culture where we're constantly being advertised to and people are constantly trying to sell us things. And so they want to sell us the means to do something deep and fulfilling, like, like using the example of learning a language or learning a musical instrument or anything else, or just a book. Um, but there's an additional cost beyond that, that we have to pay in time to actually develop the skills and to cultivate that value. So we can, when we buy something, we get this high, assuming that, like, when you buy a book, you assume you're going to read the book, right? (laughs) And so we enjoy that initial high, but that high is predicated on the belief that we're going to put in the work afterwards to actually cultivate the value by, you know, putting in the 10 hours to read the book and then the additional time to actually implement the instructions in the book. So I think we're really, that it's really been engineered for us to, um, seek that pleasure of acquisition, thinking that when we buy the thing, we're actually acquiring all the value Mm -hmm. in that new pursuit or new hobby. Yeah, I think sometimes it's so easy to want the identity, but most of the transformation is in, in the work and it's in the progress. You know, buying a gratitude journal doesn't actually do the work for you. It just provides the vehicle to do the work. And then you have to show up every day and figure out the thing that you feel grateful for. This last fall, I hosted an event, and I set the premise of the event that there were two ways that we could be successful. We could continue to make progress and roll the ball down the field, because that's the only sports analogy I know, is that there's (laughs) balls in fields and you try to move it from one end to the other. Or the other way we could be successful is to quit and to just acknowledge that's not the right path and it's not what we should be doing. Um, And that failure looks like just staying stuck, which I think ties so much into this idea of the year of depth because it's saying, I'm not going to take on new things, which is essentially preemptively quitting those. And I'm just going to focus on the things that I already made some commitment to, but why do you see people having so much resistance 
either to the idea of going deep on something or to the idea of acknowledging you're not going to do that and like giving away the books and giving away the guitar. Yeah, I think that's scary because when we initially buy the learn French book or the guitar, we do that with this belief that this is my future, that I'm going to be this guitarist or this bilingual person. And we never really challenge that belief until during the depth year, you're going to have to run into these moments like the verb conjugations chapter in the French book, where you realize that maybe you don't actually want to do everything entailed um, by pursuing this. Like, you know, and maybe you don't, well, not just maybe, you certainly don't have time. Like in a consumer culture, we almost always buy more books than we're ever going to read. We take on more pursuits than we even have time, even if we were going to completely apply ourselves, then we even have time to fully cultivate. So that's really hard, both of those moments, like getting to the sticking point and going deeper with it than you have before. That's really painful Mm -hmm. to like think, I have to sit down for 500 hours to master bar chords on the guitar. That's difficult to see. You run into your own limitations and that's a necessarily painful thing. But I think it's beyond those moments. That's where we actually get the fulfillment from. And then the other painful part is that we have to give up on these dreams that we really thought you know, we were going to have. Like, there isn't enough time to be to master all these languages and read every book and master your all the musical instruments you've ever picked up in your life. There just isn't time to do that, and it's it's hard to 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 let go of the idea that you're going to be this thing that you always thought you would on some level. Yeah, I love that struggle of you know we thought at some point we would do this thing, and and I think that is some of the fear of going deep on our dreams is that one, it will be hard, but two, we might acknowledge like it is a bridge too far for us to cross. You know, if in going deep, you're like, I'm going to finish writing a book. You might realize, wow, I actually don't have, I don't have the writing skills right now to do this. It's a long bridge before I'm actually going to be able to do that. And you have to confront it. You can't use the excuse of, oh, so busy with like these 20 other hobbies and projects. I just didn't get around to it. Um, What were some of the things that after going through this, because you wrote this post uh, a couple years ago, what were some of the takeaways that you realized on the other side of a depth year for anyone who's contemplating in 2020 and in this decade to maybe go a little bit deeper? One of the main themes that kept coming up in both my experience and the experience in a lot of the people who were doing this uh, along with me, we had a Facebook group with like over a thousand people in it, was art, making art, like, or not just art, but any kind of creative endeavor. People went back to um, drawing for the first time in years or writing for the first time in years. And it's because it's, it's really painful to just create something when you know you're not that good at it yet. Yeah. Like to, to actually try to draw something, if you haven't drawn since you were a kid, it's it's not easy. And I don't just mean the actual drawing, but the emotionally it's difficult to make something and maybe it's not that great, but you have to do that to go deeper, right? Because yeah. you only went as deep as you could before. And at, at a certain point it became painful to even try to do it. So people found that that mindset of going deeper helped them to take that little risk it takes to make something new and to risk it not being all that great. Yeah, it is, especially with creativity and those artistic creative endeavors. It's so difficult to wade through the pain of of knowing that you're lacking. Yeah, for sure. Um, There's this really great idea from Ira Glass, and it's been quoted around the internet a lot, that for us creatives, when you get into the pursuit of writing or making videos or whatever it is, um, the reason you get into it is because you have really great taste. Like You know what's good and you want to make what's good. But when you start, you just don't have the skills. And so there's this big gap that you have to cross where you're making something that doesn't meet your own standard. And that's that's painful to keep making stuff and just keep putting it out there and Um, it doesn't always get the reception that you want to get. And you know that ultimately you want to be doing better, but there's nothing to do except to cross that gap. Yeah, you just have to keep 
showing up and doing the work and it not being good enough and doing the work and it not being good enough. Like it's that pain of just doing the work that gets you to where your skill meets um, your taste. And that's where I see, that's the spot I see so many people give up is that's, that's a, that's a grind sometimes <laughs> to, to close that gap. Yeah. It's, it's a painful place to be, but it's the only way to, to get anywhere. Yeah. Oh, David, thank you so much for being here. Oh, my pleasure. And just for all of, all of our listeners, if you want to read this post or all of the other writing that David does, it is so, it is so fantastic for intentional living and like he says, just getting better at being human, which is a perfect start for your year. I would head over to his website. It's raptitude.com. That's the easiest place to connect with him. And this episode and chatting with David is the perfect reminder that we don't have to be perfect. We just have to be a little bit more courageous every day because adventure awaits. <laughs>